Edin Dupu, Dr. Pumlese Lambo Nguka, Angelique Kidjo, Jibet Jakumbu, thank you for being with us. Madam Executive Director, if I could start with you, 2020 marks the 25th anniversary of the Beijing Declaration, uh, an incredibly important international agreement that really propelled gender equality and the realization of women and girls' rights. There was a lot being planned around this, all of which has been disrupted by COVID-19. How is UN Women adjusting to this reality? And critically, how do you intend to, to move the dial forward for women and girls? To mark uh, Beijing 25, we created the campaign Generation Equality with very specific areas that we're going to focus in. But guess what? These are the areas that COVID has showed up to be significantly challenging for women and girls. So gender-based violence. We have had to ramp up our efforts there, but also commit governments to greater facilitation of services uh, that women need. Women's uh, 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 economic empowerment and economic justice, we've had to ramp up, but now take on board the fiscal stimulus that governments are providing, which are not getting into the informal sector and small business and family business and put that together. And of course, innovation and technology, another topic for Beijing 25 generation equality, we have had to stay close the digital divide and close also the gender gap in that digital divide. And Eddie, you are one of the Secretary General's 17 uh, Sustainable Development Goal ambassadors. How do you see your role right now in helping shape the response to this pandemic? Right, so my role is to illuminate for the Secretary General, for the United Nations, for world leaders, the ways in which the confluence of global shocks that we are experiencing and bearing witness to, how those shocks are all interrelated, right? So we are living at a moment where COVID-19, the deepening economic downturn and racial justice are very much interconnected. The same people that are bearing the brunt of the crudest manifestations of climate injustice are the same people who are disproportionately impacted by COVID-19. And these are the same people who are further plunged into uh, extreme poverty. So what that tells me is that the emperor has no clothes. We need to be able to bridge the gap between international development and social justice. So I'm deeply concerned about our inability to have an intersectional uh, conversation uh, about the confluence of global shocks that we're currently bearing witness to. Chibet, as the head of Global Citizen in Southern and Eastern Africa, talk to me about your view of how you ensure that um, the vulnerable women and girls aren't being left out in, in the fight against COVID. And, and specifically, uh, talk to me about, you know, how this all relates to the, to the continuing push for those SDGs to be achieved. Thank you, Aisha. We are playing an active role in mobilizing and galvanizing young people, um, primarily between the ages of 18 to 35, on these issues of global importance, um, amplifying those voices, as Eddie has said, and really providing them with the opportunity to take meaningful action to drive impact toward the achievement of the global goals. We also see ourselves playing a responsibility in helping young people to learn about the um, systemic issues involved um, and really filling those knowledge gaps. So for example, as part of our content production through the lens of COVID-19, our team is increasing awareness around not just the short-term effects, with the COVID relief, um, but also the long-term effects in terms of what it will take to build resilience and to build and to rebuild our economies uh, and communities. Through our coverage of the pandemic, um, we're also paying special attention to frag fragile health systems, so in some of those hard-to-reach places that Eddie has described, and marginalized communities that need our collective commitment and support to overcome this pandemic, help avert the next one and rebuild our world back together. Angelique, as the UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador and also the founder of Batonga, uh, an organization that's working with women and girls, 
help us understand how that work has influenced your understanding of the needs of women and girls, uh, you know, uh, uh, groups that are being really deeply impacted during this pandemic. From the beginning of the COVID-19, in two villages in Benin, I, I gather the girls and the mentors together. Because three years ago, they decided they're going to start a business of soap, solid and liquid soap. And when they started this business, they said, why are you doing soap? Why can you do something more, um, more like uh, challenging? And they said to me, those young girls said to me, well, soap is at the center of our health, our well-being. Because when we go to the next village, we buy the soap. When we come back home, we have to think about, are we washing the dishes, washing the clothes, or washing our hands and ourselves? So when the COVID-19 came, they were the first one that asked for the messages that we put on paper and they went to the radio, start doing that, put the, the soap in, in the villages, talk to the head of the village, the religious leaders, their parents and everyone and gather the people together and put stations of water there for people to wash their hands. When you empower those women, give them the lead they come up with ideas. The women of the market, when we sat down, when they start talking to me, they talk concrete. It's not dream, it's not making up stories, it's the life story. And that's what I want to answer to. Nothing that is gonna make me, it's not a PR stuff for me, it's about saving their lives. Pumalese, you know, when you look at the the impact COVID-19 is, is, having, is having, one of the things that becomes very clear is that it's really highlighting um, long-standing inequities in society. Talk to me about what you're seeing uh, when it comes to the impact COVID-19 is having on women and girls. Hunger. Women uh, have lost their livelihood uh, because uh, in the main they trade in open spaces. Uh, being in an open space right now, you risk infections but also in countries where a movement of people is restricted, even as we open up, uh, it means that the places that women trade uh, are not uh, as easily available for them as they, they have been. Angelique, to you, how do we ensure that the world builds back better and stronger for vulnerable communities? Um, I think I've been saying this for the last 10 years and COVID-19 just reassured me in my opinion from the get-go. I, I believe that we've all been working in our corners and never thinking about coming all together, full-blown to help really put an end to extreme poverty. That the time has come for us to put our ego on the bucket. The urgency is to prevent everything that we know if there is a time to talk, there is a time to act because every minute we spend talking, somebody's dying. And all I say, I'm really ready to be part of a huge coalition of action. Let's get on it, let's work for it, and let's beat COVID-19 to it. So Eddie, you know, picking up from what Angelique was saying there, how do we use our collective voice? to hold our leaders accountable, to ensure that they keep the response to COVID, um, the SDGs, that they keep those at the top of local, regional, national, international agendas. How, how do we do that? Well, we have 10 years left. 2020 marks the 10 year countdown um, until the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And what's interesting to me is that before COVID-19, SDG 3, health and wellness, was not adequately on the agenda. Before the, the discourse around climate action, climate itself wasn't on, on the agenda. Before the murder of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, racial justice and inequality wasn't adequately on the agenda as well. So we as multilateral institutions, as activists, as humanitarians, we, are, we find ourselves catching up to the moment rather than using the instruments we have to set the agenda. And I think that this is a sobering moment for world leaders to recognize that in actual fact, it's not necessarily our multilateral institutions and our global organizations that are uniting the world it's actually the unvarnished outrage 
of everyday people who are simply fed up with persistent inequality, with persistent injustice, and with being left behind. And so I think this is a moment, it's a global reckoning, um, I think for all of us as development practitioners to recognize that we have been playing catch up. And if we are serious about leaving nobody behind and ensuring that we actually meet the 2030 uh, agenda, then we need to act with urgency and we need to rethink and reimagine the way we talk about development and humanitarian work. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Pumzele, Eddie, Angelique, Chibet, this is such an important conversation at a critical time. Thank you to all of you.